music reading a long time, a long time before stuff like this started popping up. And it all started because of our friend Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. She had this posted either on her website or in her magazine. And it, the bride loved it. It's a lot! Who wants to eat pumpkin flavored sugar cookies? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so sugar cookies. I have rolled out a, a small sheet of modeling chocolate. Earlier in the day, this was much bigger. It has shrunk as the demos have gone on. But the great thing about modeling chocolate is it's, it's ready. It's ready. It's ready for anything. It hasn't had to dry. As long as it's cold, it will do whatever you need it to do. Hence this bow up here that I was talking about a minute ago. All I did was oh make gosh. it and put it on the cake. I thought it was a real bow. I didn't have to dry it. I didn't have to stuff it with cotton or toilet paper or whatever you have to do for your gum piece <laughs> bows. You just put it on the cake and walk away. Can you refrigerate it? Yes. And you'd want to. You want to chill your cakes, guys. It's been, we're in Dallas. It's hot. Mm -hmm. It's hot. It was hot until like a week ago. Mm -hmm. So I never work with room temperature cakes. Because it's not only do we have enough to deal with, but now we're working with room temperature cakes. Now you have a whole other set of problems that you might face. And so it's it's easier to work with cold cake. It's easier to deliver cold cake. That kind of stuff. So guys, we've got our modeling chocolate flat and a beautiful little snowflake stencil. And that package of stencils, Jesse, is it five? I think so. Five different snowflakes. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. And they're cookie and cupcake sized. It's awesome. I'm going to put that flat onto my modeling chocolate. Could you do this on fondant? Yes. Absolutely. But I'm going to show you some advantages of doing this on modeling chocolate. Just get that And a little, and let me hold this up so you guys can see. A little buttercream on top of there. You don't want to, that was risky for me to lift this up. You don't want to move your stencils once they're on the cake or the modeling chocolate. And then you just lift it up. Wow. wow. Oh, so great. imagine you have to get 50 of these done. You wow. roll out all your modeling chocolate or fondant, and you stencil, 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 and then you take your round cutters, uh -uh. and you've got your cookie. So you match, you know, get as close to the size of the cookie as you want. So this cutter's a good fit, right? And then you can take your cutter and cut, 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 cut. Centering it on the snowflake, mm. popping it out, and then this is my sticky water. This is water with a little bit of piping gel, and it's sticky. So it really, it, it really, it's great for disco dust. We're gonna do that in a minute. I love it. You can. What's piping Boys, gel? Boys, you're not really gonna like the disco dust, but you need to know about it. So you are gonna like it. What's like piping gel? The piping gel is. How would you answer what, and then with the water, once this water sets, you can't get this modeling chocolate off mm -hmm. or the fondant. So water, you don't need to ice this with frosting or anything like that, just a little bit of spray water. And you've got your cookies and it's fantastic. And you each have a cookie in your bag. Piping gel is, it's like thick syrup. It's like if, if corn syrup was molasses thick. Okay. Um, so you, buy, you buy it. You buy piping gel. In here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And it's did you? Did and what you, did you, did you make that bread? Did you? She's asking what? How did I make this? Because I make. Hey, Michelle Vincent. I make modeling chocolate white. You know, make it with white chocolate. And once your chocolate is seized with the corn syrup, because you're seizing your chocolate with corn syrup to make a clay. And once it's seized, you can't seize it again. So you can use your water-based gel paste colors to knead in the color. And because the chocolate has such a high fat content, it gets to be red really fast. It gets dark purple really fast. It gets black really fast. It's just, it takes the color really, really well. And so you don't need to go out and buy a bunch of candy colors. You can use the icing colors, the liquid paste, the gel paste, the Wilton gels. You know, you can use what you already have. Let me show you this. So that's the cookie. Well, yes. when you're modeling, when you're mixing in your color into the chocolate, how much time do you have before it starts getting cold and you can't work with it anymore? She's asking when I when I mix in the color, to, when I need in the color to make this a colored modeling chocolate, how long do you have before it gets too cold? To co yeah, and standing up like you had it a while ago yes. until you cannot work with it anymore. Like if it sets or dries or something yeah. like that. Okay. so. Here's my question. She's the only guy we've had in here all day. So I don't roll that out thin. It looks paper thin, right? This is what I do. I'll hold this up. Because I roll everything out. 
about an eighth of an inch thick. Modeling chocolate is stronger when it's thicker. If it's paper thin, it's not going to do that. It, it has strength and thickness. And I take my finger and I taper it down. On the edges, on I the see. On the edges. That's why it looks that way. Okay. And so oh. it looks thinner mm -hmm. than it actually is. <laughs> and then it has the strength to stand up and it has the appearance of a thin um, gum paste. Are really those all does. reasons why you wouldn't want to use fondant? I wouldn't use fondant to make bows. I would use gum paste to make bows oh, okay. because the fondant takes so long to dry. Oh, okay. So long to dry. But that is a reason why I wouldn't. A, a bow is so much faster in modeling chocolate. I mean, I've got a shop. So we're worth how quickly can we get this done? How effectively can we get this done? And so some things I know I need to go to modeling chocolate and some things I know I need to stick with fondant. And so it's just a matter of working with both and kind of knowing what they do and don't do. And that's when you'll know which one to use. I spray it with my sticky water and then put a little bit of disco dust on the end of a paintbrush and just Oh, oh, like okay. yes. I mm -hmm. it's oh, it's terrible. I mean, it ends up in your bra. Oh, it ends up in your bra. It is scary. It ends up in your bra. You look like a stripper. My husbands love it. <laughs> What's your ratio of piping gel to water? Is it very three to one. It's three to one. He's asking, "What's my ratio? My ratio of piping gel to water? It's three to one. So if you have three parts water, one part piping gel, you're just watering it down and thinning it out. Or they don't show. Like these little holes, uh -huh. you're not stenciling over that. That's not part of your design. But it'll, and be, so, but it'll leave a hole in the cake. In the fondant. In the fondant. Does it not show? It shows, but it's so. It looks like, like there's a about twenty holes up here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Water completely white and take a little bit of buttercream. Yeah, you can fill it. You can like spackle it in. Another thing too, these stencils aren't long enough to go around an entire cake. So you do one section and then you meet it with another section. So in the in betweens, pipe little bead borders all the way down, or a drape, or some flowers, or something. So you're really wanting to cover up how the stencils aren't continuous. And so, and in that sense, your holes will get covered up too. Okay. So that to get this stuff hot. So I've got a stencil. Miraculously, it's the same size as a stencil. <laughs> as a stencil. You want to make sure you clear the stencil. So then I'm going to take some gray colored buttercream. And this is just my regular shortening based buttercream. My little offset spatula. Whenever you come up here after the demo, you'll see how thin this coating is. You'll see how thin it is. If it's too thick, it's harder to unpeel, and it really doesn't add to this to the appeal if it's really thick buttercream. Do you like shortening better than butter buttercreams? She asked me, do I like shortening based buttercream better than butter buttercream? It depends. I use both. It depends on what I'm doing. I like shortening based buttercream for my wedding cakes that have a buttercream finish because it has a higher melting point. Mm -hmm. And we're in Dallas, and it's yeah. 120 degrees in August. And we have to take this cake all the way downtown in the delivery truck, and hopefully I can get the delivery truck down to about 80 degrees before I put wow. cakes in it. And it's just really difficult, so you have a high ratio. Crisco, not so much, because Crisco's a low ratio shortening, so it, it melts on your tongue on contact, and you're like, you know. So if you get the high ratio shortening for icing, and she sells it out there, it's, it's, it doesn't coat your tongue, and so it's a lot better. I use the butter-based buttercream for my sculptures. I, the butter-based buttercream, it, it sets hard in the fridge. Any butter-based butter, you put shortening in it, it won't do it. You can set it in the fridge for 20 minutes and it's rock hard. Rock hard. So you literally can start a sculpted cake and finish it in the same day because you're not waiting for your buttercream. It's ready to go. So guys, I've got a really thin coat. Pulling my stencil off. I'll leave this up here so you can see how thin it is. Look how pretty. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to leave this up here too. So you can see that. That is so pretty. And look, I think about heat. You're worried about working with modeling chocolate. Do you have hot hands? Yeah. Do you struggle with it? What I used to do is I had a damp rag and a dry rag. And I would cool my hands down. On the rag. Did you have a trick like that? Yeah, and a piece of marble. Oh yeah, a piece of marble. Yeah, it coke. The heat. Yeah, yeah coke. coke. Yeah. Coke is good, or frozen pizza. Any frozen pizza, <laughs> bag of peas, <laughs> yeah. whatever you got. Put it in away again, and then you'll. I'll turn this around so you can see it. You'll pinch off the top. 
This is how I start my drinks. Beautiful. Oh, it looks pretty. It's like a hanky. I love it. Let's do the other one. <coughs> yeah, can you say it all again? Yes. Yes. <laughs> away, towards you, away. To make that drink. You always want your edges to be away from you. And then we'll lay on the next one. My son said he, he does that with origami. <laughs> there you go. This is origami. Oh my God, you guys. There's this great origami doc documentary. Like, origami masters all over the world. I love it because it's kind of cakey. It's just kind of cakey. It's just real crafty. Have you tried something in origami with modeling something? I haven't. Will you try it? I have tried it. Have it's you? actually pretty cool. God, yeah. It's amazing. But you have to keep it in a cold room. Right. You're going to keep it going. So, guys, this is, you know, what are we going to do with this little ugly? Spot. We're going to go to Sam Moon and we're going to get a brush. Oh my gosh. And we're going to stick it right there. And we're going to mark it up. So gorgeous. And then <laughs> we have a pretty little O here. Oh boy. And we just put it in the top. And there is our gorgeous $10 serving wedding cake. Beautiful. $10. Yeah, try 20 the worst is when you when you price something to the client and they're like, oh, that's great. And you're like, no, I meant double. Because <laughs> you just don't know. Yeah, you just don't know what you're going to get. This is stenciling. This took me seconds. Yes, I've been doing this a while, but this is not hard stuff. I don't want you to screw it. It's so good. Twelve. Oh, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't know the thickness.